there, everybody. I'm Jamie with Creations of Studio 39, and welcome to, this is the last day of this four-day fun spring fling event that Yvonne has put together. So I'm really excited. Today, I'm going to do a sunflower design, and it's been something that I've been, you know, it seems a lot of us have seen sunflowers. We've seen lots of artwork with them. And I decided to go ahead and do a sunflower today on a canvas, which is not normally what I work on. A lot of times I work more on paper or um, in a journal. So, hey, I see some people popping on. So let me know. I should be able to see. Hey there, Lisa. <laughs> Um, I should be able to see Yvonne pop on here in a second. So, and then I will go ahead and get started and make sure I'm over in the spring fling group. If you are not in there, I should have a description here in my video of how to get to that group because there are over 20 artists inside that group. I think there's 25 spots. I think there's 21 or 22 artists. So it's been going on for the past couple of days. I've missed a lot of them. So I'm going to go in and catch up on some of those. And it goes through this evening. So there's still some other artists to be able to catch. So make sure you get into the group. There's Yvonne. Hey, and I see Mandy popping on. So great. I'm going to go ahead and get started. All of my information is up in my video about where you can find me and different things that I do. And we'll talk about that kind of like while I'm painting. But I want to go ahead and get started because I have different parts to the sunflower design that I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with some paper and I'm going to do just a fun technique to get some paint onto paper. And I have three sheets that I'm going to use. And I have just like all of these fun um, springy colors. On these three, I'm going to use some greens for the leaves, and then I'm going to use some um, yellows and oranges and things for the sunflower that I'm going to create. So hey there, Loretta. I see Sue popping on. Let me know where you guys are watching from, um, because I know there's going to be some different people watching that I am. Um... Oh, you know what? I'm just going to put this right on the paper. <laughs> so you just need like a little bit for this technique that I'm gonna do here. Um, so on this one is gonna be the green and I am using um, Anita's acrylic and then this is a deco art. So this is one of my favorites, it's holly green and um, it's just like such a nice rich green. And then this one is um, lily pad. Don't you just love the names of paint colors? They're so much fun. Okay, and then I'm using a really fancy tool here. I'm using an old credit card. <laughs> so, oh, Loretta's in Florida. I've got Alabama. Hey there, Carrie. Oh, I see Tammy watching. She's in New York. Mandy's in Alabama. So I have both of these green colors on here. And I'm going to take this credit card. You could use a credit card, a gift card. You could use a piece of cardboard. But what I'm going to do is scrape the paint across my page here. And it's just going to create some different colors and mixtures. And it almost soaks into the fiber of the paper. So I really like how it just kind of creates this um, bond almost with the paper. So, and I put extra paint on here. And sometimes that happens when I do this technique. So I always have some extra paper whenever I am working with paint in case I have extra because since I'm a mixed media artist nothing goes to waste if it is bigger than my thumbnail I save it <laughs> so because I figure I can use it for something so I have some extra paint here on my credit card but I want you to Look at some of those variations that I got just from the two paints and um, just scraping that across. Now I'm going to set this over here to dry and I'm going to get a, another piece of paper that I have. And I'm just going to scrape all of this paint off. So I'm going to make sure that I have 
all of that scraped off. And look, it almost filled up a whole another sheet of paper. So I will be able to use that in my journal. And I still have other paint colors on there. <laughs> so it's kind of scraping off some of those too, which is kind of fun. It's almost like, have you ever used a, um, I always forget what it's called, a jelly pad, a jelly, I think jelly pad, right? I know, Carrie, isn't the texture so fun just from scraping? Now you could, you could do, and look, I, I even like some of these areas where it's just, you know, not very much paint on there at all. So I'm going to put that one over there too. And then these two, I'm going to do kind of like some yellows and um, maybe a little bit of oranges. Tell me if you have a favorite yellow. So this deco art one is just the primary yellow. I'm going to use that one. And I'm just going to use a little bit of paint. Try not to put too much. And then I have this one too, which is a daffodil yellow. It's a multi-surface paint, but sometimes I use those too. And it'll just give me some variation of the two colors in there. And so I'm going to use this side that I already had started using the yellow on there. Oh yeah, th this these colors will be perfect for a sunflower. Tell me if you um, have a favorite flower. Do you like sunflowers or do you prefer, um, you know, spring is coming. I love the smell of hyacinths. And I love that pretty like periwinkle, like purple kind of color. Um, and then we have these beautiful um, oriental Asiatic lilies that are this beautiful deep red color. They're only, they only bloom for a, a short time, like a week and a half maybe or something. So I love those in the spring. Okay, I was a little bit better with paint that time. And that one has like some variations, some textures, the two different yellows in there. And then I'm going to come and do this one too. The less that you play with it and scrape the paint over it, the more variations you're going to get. Oh, lilacs. Yes, Sue. Oh my gosh, those smell so good. I love the purple color too. Okay, I'm gonna have some extra paint, so I'm gonna grab another paper. And I, I'm gonna scrape that one to make sure. So these square pieces of paper, this is from a new journal that I found at Hobby Lobby. Tell me if you love going to Hobby Lobby. <laughs> so I know Lisa's on here and she said, what was it Lisa, you said that you pay Hobby Lobby to work for them? <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. So I'm just scraping off some of this paint here. And I even got, I even got a little bit of brown in there. I've got like a scrape of green. So all of those just add to the variations of the, the yellow in there. So I, I love all the different textures and things like that. So so this is just a quick technique. And you know what, what I really like about this? It dries really quickly because there's not a whole lot of paint on there. It dries really quick. So you can get a lot of fun. I just did yellow. I mean, think about, you could put different colors together on there and really get some fun. I still got a lot of yellow on my, I have to use another one here. I had um, my friend Lori ask me yesterday, I was showing her this picture of the sunflower that I had already done. She's like, oh my gosh, it looks three dimensional. How did you like paint it like that? Well, I'm gonna show you like tricks that I used. And this is one of them because I'm putting this texture on here. I think some of this is, is still. So look, you can, I'm gonna just scrape this paint off here with my finger and look, you can, you can put it on with your fingers too and like finger paint. Anyway, these are just like the background pages that I'm making to be able to create the 
the sunflower that I'm gonna do here. So I use baby wipes a lot. So that's what I have over here to the side. And um, they have just the right amount of moisture that I don't have to keep a lot of water around. But look, here's here's one of the other things that I've used to make some background pages with some cool textures. I think I got this at the Dollar Tree and it's just a big giant sponge. And sometimes I'll do the same kind of technique and use kind of a damp sponge and you get some really fun like background pages that already have texture on them. So that's one of my little tricks for getting some dimension, getting like some different colors. Hey, I see my mom pop on. I, well, I'm kind of in two different places right now. So I'm on my business page, but this is being streamed into the um, Spring Fling group. So if you want to see several different artists, you can go to that Spring Fling group and you can um, get access to all of those tutorials. So, oh, is it kind of off? Sometimes that happens. Hey there, Bev. Sylvia says she has too many favorite flowers. I do have, I do love a lot of different flowers. I think I get that from my mom. She loves flowers too. So, oh, we've got the Ross girls. Hey there, Jet. It's sunny here too, but not warm. It's, it's like in the thirties or something. So it's kind of cold here in Ohio. Okay. So here is the background. This canvas I think I got this at the Dollar Tree too. It's an eight by 10 canvas and I'm using some painter's tape. And um, so this is an eight by 10 canvas. So I'm gonna divide it into fours. So I have, I did not bring it down, but I have this painting that I see every morning in my bathroom. And it, it has a grid of four squares and there's a flower. So I saw that and I was kind of inspired by that to do this flower idea, but with a sunflower. So I am going to just measure real quick, just so I have like a guideline. I could eyeball it too. It doesn't have to be precise, but I'm gonna mark off at five. So tell me if you guys have been watching the videos, do you have a favorite? that you've seen um, already? Like what was the project that's been your favorite so far? Like I said, I haven't seen all of them, so I don't even know like what all. <laughs> so, oh, Jana, I don't know. Oh, we have talked that you're in Oklahoma, I think, because I had a um, Bev now that's on here, my aunt, she's now in Oklahoma. And um, my stepsister lives in Oklahoma. Bev, I don't know how close you are to Tina. How close do you live to Tina now? So I'm pulling off some painter's tape and I'm just gonna line it up with those marks that I just made. And I'll tell you what I do is I make it a little bit longer and I actually tape it down to the table. It helps it so it doesn't move around. So I just kind of use those little marks that I made with the ruler I'm just taping that down and I have some nice spring colors. So I've kind of chosen, I'll show you the background one that I did yesterday. I've kind of chosen like three or four different colors. So what kind of colors would you think of like for spring that you, um, that you really like? Let's down on here first. I think I need like a little bit more room. And this doesn't need to be precise. I'll show you what it is that I'm doing here. And um, it's just kind of giving me a guideline for the grid. And so I'm gonna create a grid and what I've sectioned off is this one first. So I put the tape on the side, you know, to the right, and to the right. So I'm doing this grid here and I'm gonna show you the one that I started yesterday. So I have three different colors on here. I have a light pink, a darker pink and a purple that I use, but there's the grid that I created 
and there's some stencils that I used in the background. So I'm creating this grid here with the different colors and I'm gonna do the stencils with a color that's kind of similar. So, hey there, Lori Bess says pink, lavender, yellow, light blue. Oh, those would be really pretty. Butterfly bush, bluish purple. Yes, I love that, that um, periwinkle that's so popular. Actually, I'm all out of the one that I have. Lime green, pink, purple, and yellow. That would be really pretty, Carrie. Oh, good, Gina. Yeah, I'm going to show you how it all goes together with the sunflower that I'm going to create, too. And in the description, there is a, a download that you can get, and it's a create a sunflower design, which is what we're doing today. So you can use these in any way that you want. But this is the sunflower that I'm going to use. There's a leaf on there. There's also a butterfly, and there's a little bee. So this page up in the description, there is a link. So you get onto my email list and you, um, you like once a week, I usually send out like a studio news and um, have like just kind of what's going on in my art world, right? Like in my studio. And so um, Lisa says, are those stencils in my Amazon shop? Yes, there are some stencils. I'm going to show to you that they are in my Amazon shop, but I, I did not put that in the um, description up there. So I'm using this pink. It's called baby pink. So I'm going to be using that one. So I, I love all the pink colors. I'm going to use this hyacinth color. This is one of my favorites. And... I think I'm going to use a little darker purplish color, which is this Heather. So that's kind of like a in between the pink and that, um, that hyacinth color. And so those are going to be the three colors. You could use oranges. This must be almost out too. This is one of my favorites. Oh, there's a little glob in there. Do you hate when you get those little pink globs? <laughs> I usually try to store my paint upside down um, and that helps. One of the other things that helps is to not have extreme cold or heat with your paint. So try to keep them in like a, a, a um, consistent temperature. That's what's happened to some of my paints. There's been like a, um, a different, so. Um, different temperatures. So I'm actually going to paint these grids on. So I think I'm going to do the heather color in these two, and then I'll do the light pink. And then I think I'm going to do that hyacinth color. No, heather. So I'm going to do high, I'm going to do the lighter colors, and then I think I'm going to do the darker colors with the stencils. So <laughs> I know, Loretta. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, that's so fun. I love when you guys are like making connections in the comments. So I'm just painting um, this on. So I think I'm going to do this pink here first. And I do paint the sides of my canvas. And this doesn't really take too much paint here. But I paint the sides just so that it looks completely finished. So I, th I think I'm going to do the pink here. I'll do the two purples and then the, the, the um, well, I think I'm going to really create it as a grid. I don't know. What, what do you think? So this one I used the lighter pink up here and then the darker pink in the corner. And then I used the same two purple colors here. So I think I might do almost like a checkerboard um, on this one. So. I know, Debbie, isn't that funny? <laughs> so I don't put very much paint on here. I am going to go ahead and do the sides. I think this could be really fun. You could create like a set of three of these in different colors and different flowers and kind of hang them in a set. I think that would be a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this. So I'm going to use my little heat gun. It's not super quiet. So if you want to turn down your volume just for a second while I put this on here. So 
The thinner you put on the paint, the quicker it dries. So I'm going to go ahead and use some stencils. So I'm kind of doing each square before I move on to the next one. So I have a lot of different stencils here. And I like this size of stencils. These are square stencils because they work really well in my journal. So I had a membership that's called the Start Journal Club. And I have a lot of my members that are watching right now. And the, um, the journals are about like five and a half by eight and a half. And um, I send out a box each month, or you can just subscribe to get all of the like downloadables. Like tell me if you're going to download this, um, create a sunflower design page all of the downloadables like that. So in my membership, I have already given them that sheet. So I don't make them go through the whole process of putting in their email and, and all of that. So I go ahead and make that available. So these stencils, these heart stencils are in my Amazon shop because I put these in the box for February. Um, look how pretty that one is. I think I might use that one. So I have all different ones. You know, there are ones with flowers in there. Um, little spiral kind of designs. So the whole set of the heart ones um, is pretty inexpensive. They were, I don't know, eight or nine dollars or something for like 16 stencils. So you get a lot of different, different ones. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I use a couple of different things when I'm applying paint with the stencil. I don't usually use a brush. I think that the brush gets the stencil, the paint underneath the stencil too easily. So I don't usually use a brush. Sometimes I'll use like a, a sponge. Sometimes I will use a makeup sponge. So tell me in the comments, what is it that you use when you stencil? Do you use the specific like stencil brush? Because I know sometimes um, people will use those. I'm actually going to use a baby wipe. And what I'm going to do is just kind of take my finger. The makeup sponges work really well, but you just need like a small amount of paint. So I'm going to take this um, Heather color, which is a little bit darker. And I'm just going to get just a little bit of paint. And with this one, I, I'm probably going to have to be pretty careful, but I'm just kind of using this to get some texture. There's not a whole lot of difference in the color and the value of that pink versus this Heather color. So it's just kind of giving me this little, it's just adding like a layer of texture on here. And I don't even really care if it gives me, you know, some of the heart shape in there too. I'll lift it up and it's really just about getting another layer of texture on there. So, oh, I can't lift it up because I have the tape on there. <laughs> so, but then I just kind of move it around and, you know, some places it's going to be a little bit darker. Whatever kind of stencils that you have or even, um, anything that you could make a texture with. So tell, tell me like some other things in the comments, like what could you use? I know a lot of people use bubble wrap, so you could use bubble wrap um, to make this other texture, but really it's about just having two colors that are, oh, I kind of like that, that soft look on there. So I just kind of want like this other layer of color, this other layer of texture on there. So yes, yeah, the, hey there, Renee, the um, makeup sponges I use for a lot of different things. So, so I'm going to go ahead and lift up this. 
because remember I put the tape on the right hand side. I'm gonna make sure this is dry. So I'm gonna turn on my heat gun just for a second again. Because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tape and put on this side. Because now I'm gonna do this grid over here. And that's gonna be my purple um, color, what it, the highest in color. It's gonna be the lightest color. So I'm kind of doing a light color down and then I'm doing the darker color on top with the stencils. And remember, I don't wanna use very much paint. It dries a lot faster. It doesn't go underneath the tape. So I try to paint wherever the tape is, I kind of go inward. And, and that helps from it going underneath the tape too if you don't have it um, taped down very well. Let's see, the old white triangle ones. Yes, that's exactly what I use, Mandy. And you can get, I don't, do they have those at the Dollar Tree? I got a whole bunch of them somewhere when they were on sale at Meyer or someplace, I don't know. So I don't think I got mine from Dollar Tree but I think they have them there. They work really well, but don't get them wet. Don't use them with stencils if they're wet. So when I, when I put the paint on here, I try to kind of do just like a smooth um, brush stroke. It doesn't use very much. And then I go ahead and do the sides. You know, they have those canvas boards at the Dollar Tree. And you can just pop those right into a frame. So then you don't have, you know, you don't have edges and you can just put them in a frame. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this a little bit. And sometimes I don't even like to put a whole layer of paint on there because I just like the different variations of the colors. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do, I think I'm gonna use a different stencil. So let's see. Oh, I really like this. This one's one of my favorites. So I like this one with all the spirals. So I think I'm gonna use that one. They do have them, Lori. I was thinking that they probably did, but I couldn't. I could, I, they last a long time. I kind of like wash them out after I use them and then like let them dry. So I'm gonna use the same color that I did in here on this purple one too. And I just kind of like, you know, just kind of like rub that over. I have very, very little paint on here at all very little paint that helps so it doesn't go underneath the stencil. So what I'm doing with my, um, you can see over here with my baby wipe is I'm offloading in the same way that you would with a paintbrush. I'm just tapping down so there's not a whole lot of paint on there. But I'm really not too concerned if it goes underneath Oh, that's, that's very pretty. So then I would probably, I'm probably gonna use that same, that same stencil over on this side too. The painting that I have up in my bathroom, it doesn't have this texture, but you know, one of the things that I just really like about doing mixed media is this layering, this texturing, um, just the interest that it creates from having all those different layers. So that that is just, that's just one of the things that I really like. So I just kind of have like that pattern all over the back there. But basically that's what I'm doing with this background and doing this grid. So you can see that tape helped me to have that grid there. 
And so now I have to take that piece completely off because I would need to change this one. And I'm just going to go ahead. So I would lift this up and put it to the right hand side, right? And then I would do the same thing over here and line this up with my little mark. So I do this one here with the purple and the stencil, and then I would just move this tape over and do this fourth grid. So do you see how that makes sense? You just kind of do like a grid at a time. So then that's how I got those, you know, those four spaces there. And it has, you know, the stencils over the top there. So I'm not going to finish this one just because I don't want to take up um, too much time because I want to show you how to do the sunflower. But I want to show you these up close. So look how pretty this one is really. But see how the colors are pretty similar. Like you want them to be close to the same value. So this Heather that's in the back or Hyacinth that's in the background is just a little bit lighter than this Heather that's on top. What you don't want to have are two things like this. So see how that blue, this blue is such a darker value, that probably wouldn't work very well. It's too much of a contrast. Normally I talk about contrast and how you wanna have that, but on this one, I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more subtle in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this one off to the side and I'm going to, show you how I worked on this one and show you the, the sunflower. Now, this extra paint that I have here, this will definitely go on maybe some pages like this. I'll do some background, I'll do, some, I'll do something with this paint so that I can use that in my journal and, and do some kind of page with that. So the other thing that I did with this background here, I have some Posca markers because you don't have to have a perfect grid. The Posca markers will help you to kind of go over. So what I did is I just kind of drew some lines with my Posca marker kind of over, you know, that, that grid there. And that helps to just kind of, um, it, it's kind of like a messy line, you know, so that it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, let go of being perfect. I told a class one time that I was teaching that fun is what's perfect. If you are having fun playing with the paint and getting paint on your hands and experimenting with some of your different materials and things, that is what it's about. So you can go ahead and type yes in the comments if you agree with that. Like that's really what it is about. So I'm going to show you now how to do the sunflower. So this is the sunflower that I did yesterday. Hey there, Marty, just popping on. So I'm going to show you how I did this with that tracer. So remember, if you want to, I'm calling it a tracer. If you want to download this page that has the sunflower, the leaf, the butterfly, and this bee on there, it is in the description of this video. And you can go that gets you onto my email list and you get that, that tracer. So I'm going to use some of my yellow that I scraped some paint on. And I'm just going to look at them. I think I like this one best because it has some variations in it. And I, my plan is to only use one, but I'm gonna show you how, if you want to use two layers, you could do that too. So I'm gonna take this yellow paper and I'm gonna take a piece of graphite or carbon paper. So Renee says yes, Mandy says yes. Yes, Loretta, just absolutely, just play and have fun and let go of it being perfect. Because really, when you let go of that, you're going to learn a lot more about what happens when, and then you can use that next time. Like this, where I had just a little bit of paint and that texture, I really like that. So what I learned was the, the less amount of paint that I have on there, 
the more texture it gives to me. So that was like something then that I'll be able to use for next time. So I'm going to take this, some carbon paper, and I'm going to take this sunflower design and I trace it right on top of the yellow and it fits just perfect on there. So I'm gonna use, um, I was just using it last night. It's my um, stylus. Oh, here's one of the little makeup sponges I could have used. You can see I, I reuse them, so. Um, I'm not seeing my stylus. Oh, here it is, here it is, okay. So I got the stylus at the Dollar Tree, of course. And I'm gonna use the small, smallest little end here. And I'm just gonna trace these lines on here. It does not need to be perfect. And I'm not even, oh, it felt like it went off the page there. Oh, it's, it's on the table, that's what it is. And I'm not going to trace these little centers in there. You, you could do those too, like if I wanted to know where those were. So I'm just going to trace all of these petals. And you could use two pieces of paper of the yellow if you wanted to do two layers. Because really, there's two layers of petals here. Sometimes I hold my finger down and just make sure that I traced it. Because <laughs> sometimes I lose track. But I'm just going to trace the one layer and I'm going to show you how I define the different petals on here. But you could cut out two layers and you know layer over two layers of the sunflower. I'm doing this on canvas, but I do plan on doing the same page in my journal. I think I made it all the way back around. Yep. Okay. So you could do the same thing with this little bee, which is super cute, the butterfly, and then I'm going to do a leaf on the green. Maybe two. Hey there, Shauna. Hey, I saw Ann just pop on too. So let me know where you guys are, are watching from. So look, the graphite paper gives me like a really nice design there. And, you know, here's what I'm going to do too. I'm going to leave it like this and do some of the color and show you how I did this. And then I'm going to cut it out. And that will also help you to, um, to just have like nicer like edges. So I have an assortment of different things. Like if you saw my table right now, here, look, look, I've just got like an assortment of stuff everywhere. That's just like how I work. So I'm going to use some different materials to create some of the different layers on here. And the first way that I did that is I used a marker. I actually like the look of the marker over top of the paint. So I'm going to use an orange. And I'm going to use like an orangish color for the back petals. So all of the back petals so that they look like they're farther back, I'm going to use the orange. And, you know, I don't even have to be super careful about the edges because I'm going to end up cutting that out. Now you could use, these are um, a brush color marker. You could also use um, a Posca. You could use, if you have illustration markers, I got some really good illustration markers at um, Five Below. Like, do you guys ever shop at Five Below for art supplies? They have a lot of stuff, actually. So do you see how it's just giving me a little bit of variation? to tell the difference between the back petals. So I also like these distress crayons and they work really well for like blending and things like that too. So 
anything that you want to use to be able to kind of build up some layers and to make it look more three-dimensional. So, oh, you're in Indiana. That's really close. Oh, Renee is in North Carolina. That's right. Nebraska. I've got Oregon. Oh, we've got people from like all over the place. That's so fun. Okay. The center, I left some of the yellow in there, right? I didn't do a separate brown over here. I took the walnut stain distress crayon and I just did like some of the you've never been to you have to go Loretta <laughs> so I just kind of colored in the center here these if you have not used these distress crayons they're a little bit pricier than a crayon but they are so like silky smooth and they blend and they're just fun to use in all kinds of different mixed media ideas. So I just kind of went darker around the edges and then I kind of just spiraled into the inside. And then I just kind of started like layering some ideas. So in the center of the, the lines of um, the sunflower, I did use a Sharpie marker. So, this one I actually traced where it was. But you can just do a Sharpie marker in there. You know, sometimes I'll do one little line. Sometimes I'll kind of do, you know, maybe like a couple of different lines in there. So now I kind of need that on, on these two. You can do lines where you do like dashes and dots. So that's kind of fun. All of those little details are just what starts to add interest to your artwork. And so I would go and do all of those around, you know, in the petals and see how it's already starting to add some dimension to that sunflower. I usually do things in threes. Like, tell me if you um, if you already kind of know that concept. Like, when you're decorating, when you're sitting things on your mantle, it's best to do things in threes and have it. It just balances out things, um, and and it just it doesn't have to be symmetrical. <laughs> So I did all of these, I did some dots. You know, you can just kind of have fun. Some of them have like some dots on there, some don't. And um, I like gold. So tell me if you're like a gold, you like to add like gold accents. Now I don't wear like gold jewelry usually, but I, I love to use gold in my, my artwork. So I have these, um, I might have all kinds of different gold, but this one is like a brush pen. So I don't know if you can see, like the end of that is like a, a brush and it's like a, a fine tip. Oh, Jana says she's never been to Five Below either. Oh, you don't have one, Shauna? Oh, hey, where is Berlin Heights, Debbie? I don't know where that is. I'm in Ohio, but closer to around like Cincinnati area. So I don't know Berlin Heights. So what I did on this one is I used some gold like around the edges to just kind of like define the edges of these petals. So I kind of just did it on one side of all the petals. And it helped me to kind of cover up the line a little bit of where the carbon paper was. And so that you know, that went pretty, pretty quick there. And then the last kind of thing that I did is I took a Sharpie marker that has a, it's the fine point Sharpie marker. And I just like started doing some dots. And I concentrated the dots on the outside edge a little bit more. And then on the inside edge, you know, I kind of spread them out or on the inside of the circle, I kind of spread them out a little bit more. 
So that adds all of that texture in the center of the sunflower that's like the seeds of the sunflower. And then the last thing that I went in, I went in with a Stabilo pencil. So all of these things are in my Amazon shop and they're all kind of listed underneath like the basic art supplies that you need for art journaling. So that's, I'll, I'll put my Amazon link in here. Um, but what I did is I kind of went around the edge a little bit and I really kind of defined the, the ends, that circle of the sunflower. And then I also colored in these little triangles a little bit. Not completely filled them in, but just created kind of like that shadow in there. A Stabilo pencil is a water activated pencil. So I will show you if I wanted to, I could dip a paintbrush in a little bit of water and I could actually paint that black and it, it spreads out the Stabilo pencil a little bit. So it's kind of a fun way to kind of draw and paint and it kind of intensifies that Stabilo pencil too. And so, you know, depending on how much of that I, I want in there, maybe even a little bit. So you can see how that just kind of added like a darker layer because I wanted that contrast in there. And then I would just go in and cut And you see how I'm kind of, I'm cutting towards, um, I'm cutting away from me, but I'm just using the, moving the paper, right? So I'm moving the paper and then, you know, my scissors continue to like go away. So I would just cut out all of, all of my sunflower there. I could do the same thing with these green papers. For, I think I'll use this one for my leaf. And so this is kind of fun because I don't know exactly where that's going to land on my paper there. So I'm just going to trace this, this leaf. And I think I'll just do one leaf. But you know, you using this stylus and using this create a sunflower design paper, you could trace this as many times as you wanted. So if I wanted to do like a little bit with the leaf and add some of the veins in there, I could do that with I don't know if this one's going to be Oh, this one is. So this is one of the metallic markers from the Dollar Tree. So if I wanted to do, um, you know, oh, that's kind of pretty. If I wanted to do just, you know, some of the veins. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but I can't get it. Oh, you can kind of, oh, there you go. You can kind of see like those veins in there. Oh, so. Um, oh, Carrie says she likes the watercolor pencils. Yes. I'm going to show you one last thing on these before I show you what it looks like on top of the canvas. So that's all that mixed media is, is just using a variety of different materials. So if you're using paint and a marker, that's mixed media <laughs> because you're using. So I like the freedom of using different materials instead of just paint to get the result that I want. So how pretty is that with the sunflower? But the other thing that I'll do a lot of times, because I want this to stand out against this canvas, it's actually a really nice contrast. But if I want the edge to stand out, one of the things that I'll do is maybe take Oh, I have like all of my stuff 
like right in here. Maybe I would use I have these cutest little stamp pads. Look how cute those are. So I think I have a brown maybe. I might try this green. Let's see. I got these at Tuesday morning. Do you have a Tuesday morning near you? Tuesday mornings, maybe it has an S on the end. Um, I'm gonna try this color. I don't know if it'll be quite dark enough. But sometimes I'll take a stamp pad and I'll just go around the edges. Oh, that's nice, but it's not quite dark enough. So I'm going to use the brown. Oh, and I think my brown is almost dry. Okay. See, this is why I kind of have like everything sitting around so I can just like keep trying until I find what it is that works. So I'm going to try this Walnut Distress Crayon. And I'm just going to color around the edge. Because what I want is a little bit of contrast. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll just pull that in a little bit just to soften that edge. And see, that adds like a whole nother layer of dimension to that too. Oh, there you can see the metallic. So that whole other layer. And then I might go ahead and do that with my sunflower too. So I have edges on there. And that's one of my tricks for making it look like it has more dimension in there. And it makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So how many of you are going to go and download the Sunflower Design page? Because now that you've seen me use all these different materials, you want to create a sunflower. <laughs> like you want to create the paint and the stencils and just, it's just so much fun to me to just play around and not really have an idea like I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can use um, this page and even create different different designs with it. So I have that that crayon on there and then I could take some of that. Oh there's some places where there's a lot of that but look I just have a little bit on my fingers and look it just creates like all of that texture on there. Um, when I pull that in. So actually, I really kind of like that. It'll, it, it really does like to stress it um, and just add some variation in colors in there. So I actually kind of like that. So in some of the places where there's the other lines, so there is my other sunflower. And then I still have um, that one that I'm going to finish too. So, so what I would do now is I would assemble all of it. And so I'm going to, you could use a hot glue gun. You could, I, I usually just use the inexpensive like glue sticks. Um, so I'm going to see. But I think what's going to happen is I'm just going to glue down the center. And it's going to end up being like more three dimensional. Now, what I was saying about you creating two of these, you could cut this one out so it didn't have the back petals and you could have another layer on here. So you could have something that looked a little bit more three dimensional, right? <laughs> Jana says, you know, I want to download them now. Oh, Carla said she's already got it. Oh, good. Oh yeah, Loretta, that's, yeah, you could definitely do it freehand. So sure. Um, but I think what I'm going to try is, you know, just the glue stick and then I could put the leaf on there, you know, wherever I want. I might even actually glue the leaf on here beforehand. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there to glue the leaf on first. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the center there. 
I'll see. I might need something more than just the um, the glue. But we'll see if it, if, but look, I kind of like that it's, it's three dimensional and it's, you know, popping up off the, the page there or off the canvas, but you could, you know, just have the leaf on there. You could have the butterfly, you know, on there. If you did a set of, you know, like three of these going across, it would be super fun because you could have the bee on one of them and the butterfly and they could all be a little bit different. or you could do this too. You could move the sunflower up a little bit instead of having it right in the center. And you could do a stem then right down the center with the leaf off the stem too. So instead of having it be a sunflower where it looks like you are looking like straight down at it, which is what this one is, you could have it be a sunflower where it's more, um, you know, from the front where there's a stem on there, right? I am all about using ideas as inspiration, right? Hey there, Melissa. Um, using them as inspiration and then trying out different things. So I would love to see you try this and use that Create a Sunflower design page and, um, and be able to create whatever it is that you wanted to create with it. Um, I am trying to see if I can, there we go. Um, yes, and, and, and share like other ideas of how, but it's hard to do that on a business page. Um, you can definitely share them in Yvonne's craft group. I believe that she has, you know, the ability where you can share things in there but I would love to see them inside of my art journaling 101 group. So the link is up at the top there that you can join that. And it's just a great place where we share a lot of the creative things that we do, like fun things that we find on, you know, deals and things like that. And that is where I would love to be able to see some of your designs of how you use that page and how you put those pieces together and be able to create something on your own. So yes, gel medium would definitely work too. I, that's like over there. So the, the glue stick was closer. So, and I think I might glue a little bit more down on there just so um, more of the center stays down, but I like how it pops off. Do you like how that just kind of like is raised up a little bit? I really like the idea of it being like a little bit more three-dimensional like that. But that is, I would love to see like what you do with this and not copy mine. Like use different colors. You're gonna have your own stencils, um, play around with the, maybe it could just be a butterfly in the center instead of the sunflower, right? So you can make it your own. And um, the last thing that I wanted to mention, cause I'm right at about an hour, so that worked out perfect. The last thing that I wanted to mention that I put up in the um, description up there was that I just started a brand new group yesterday. So if you are a creative business owner, like I am, I own Creations of Studio 39, I just formed a group that is for other creative business owners to have a community to be able to share and encourage and support each other. So um, that link is up at the top. It's called Creative Business Owners. Um, creative Business Owner Basics. I think that's what I call it. CBOB is, is the, the acronym for it. And that came about from the need that I saw a few weeks ago when I did a video series of other creative business owners who really wanted a community and wanted a community to be able to share. So if you put in the comments that, yes, you are a CBOB, you can just use that and I'll know, and I'll put the link directly to you so that you can um, get it, um, you know, get the notification for that, but it should be in the description here too. So um, yes, and Loretta's talking about the course that I start tomorrow. So if um, you get into the CBOB group, 
then you will find out a little bit more about the course that I'm starting that I'll offer again um, later, probably this time next year or this with, with another time this year, probably. I don't know exactly what I'm going to offer it um, yet, but oh, you're welcome, Yvette. So there you, did I say Yvonne? I think I said Yvonne earlier in the video. So there you go. So that is my finished sunflower design, but I would love to see yours. So it's four o'clock. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments, but go watch the other presenters over in the Spring Fling group. And I don't remember exactly who was after me, but I know the next person starts at 4.30. So Yvette, if you want to put exactly who that is, um, I don't remember, I, I had the list, but I don't remember right off who it is. So if you want to put that in here and give people a direction, like where to go next time. But if you get in the Spring Fling group, Yvette is um, streaming all of them into there. So <laughs> you answered almost anything. Oh, that's awesome. So Anyway, thanks for joining me today. And what I've been telling people is remember that you get to decide that you can create a life you love. So see you next time, everybody.